How about the Texas A&M Mood Tracker? This one's going to be fun. This one we got asked for the most, I think, out of any program so far. Texas A&M and the Mood Tracker there right now. What is the temperature of the fan base? This is one that I wanted to say for Texas A&M. The lying in the weeds. It's a very popular metaphor. But I don't think there's any program out there, pound for pound, that this metaphor describes more than Texas A&M football. Lying in the weeds. I want you to think about your perception of this program. If you're an Aggie fan versus if you're just an outsider. This is a full, like, National Geographic special right now. If you've ever seen it, I mean, the imagery is there. The tiger, you know, creeping up on the whole herd of gazelle. Gazelles? Gazelle? I don't know. A bunch of them. A bunch of gazelles. There's the plural. And you've seen it a million times before. It's that thing that... It's, it's that animal, that predator that's, all, that's able to arrive before you even knew it was there. That's the best I could come up with, I guess, the tiger. But, I mean, it could be any of a number of predators out in the wild. That's kind of how Texas A&M fans feel. Like, that's where they feel like their program is right now. I wholeheartedly agree with them. I, I'd buy a ton of stock in Texas A&M right now. I feel the same way about them as I do about Oklahoma. It's a very cheery into the show tonight uh, as a result. But the question, again, I was talking about the podcast we recorded this morning. I got a question on the podcast, and uh, this question was about Texas A&M. Uh, it was kind of prophetic because the, the listener didn't know we were talking about him tonight. But he asked, how come people are so hesitant to buy into Texas A&M? And this is an Aggie fan, and he said, hey, man, I, like, I think we got everything. I think we're ready to compete now. I think the future is looking incredibly bright, as Connor just said in the live chat there. You think I don't read the live chat, but I do. Well, my answer to that was, again, the reason they're not going to buy into you is because your last national championship, I mean, coincided with, like, Sherman's march through the South, and so it's been a long time. People really need to see it before they'll buy in. That's the first answer, and that's very simple. Here's the second answer. Alabama. That's the answer. The University of Alabama. Because here's the fact of the matter, and I think most of us know this to be true. If I didn't change a thing about Texas A&M, but all I did was I gave them Notre Dame schedule from this past year, or Clemson schedule, or Ohio State schedule, they're probably in the playoff. Play in any of those schedules, they're probably in the playoff. Or if not, they are a strong contender for being in the playoff. What stood between them in the playoff this year was Alabama and the beating that Alabama put on them, which was the exact equal score, by the way, as Alabama put on Ohio State in the national championship game. And number two, you know they got to play that team every year. So you just assume they're not going to get over Alabama. They're not going to beat them. And if they're not going to beat them, by and large, you believe they're not going to make the playoff. And that's it. It's not really about the quality of team. It's just that you know who they got to play every year. I think that's in the back of a lot of people's minds. I don't think you're wrong, but I just think it's Jimbo knew what he was getting when he signed up for this. It's not like Alabama's a recent addition to the SEC West. Like this is this is why it is big boy football in the SEC West. You got to play them every year. But Jimbo Fisher, I think, is much closer to the promised land than Kevin Sumlin ever had Texas A&M. The College Football Daily with Trey Scott, Trey Stanley Scott, was um, they were this morning talking about Texas A&M with Brian Peroni from Gig 24/7 and. They were talking about the Sumlin years. I thought it was kind of fascinating because I think they're, they're much closer right now than they were back then. But see, I don't think that right now A&M football has as much sizzle to it as they did in their peak in the early years of Kevin Sumlin because you had Johnny Menzel out there. You had the answer at quarterback. Now, here's the irony. I think Fisher's got every other part, every other appendage of the football program. I think he's got it built to a level that surpasses what Sumlin ever had, even during his best years there. The one place he hasn't had it is quarterback. The only place that Sumlin had it better at any point in his tenure than Fisher has it now was quarterback. As a result... I think that's why A&M is kind of in the weeds over here. P I don't think the general college football fan has the slightest clue how set up, how built for long-term success Texas A&M is right now. It's only going to take a quarterback. They're not going to have to build around the quarterback. It's already built. Everything's already there. They've, they've built internally. They've really got good quality elite SEC caliber depth along both lines of scrimmage. They've built depth along both lines of scrimmage. They are very physical. Running back, they have a wide variety of talent, both size and speed in any given year. They've also got it, and I think they are improving rapidly at the perimeter on the skill positions offensively. Defensively, they have kind of taken the same trajectory climb as Oklahoma and Alex Grinch has. So their quality there, uh, recruiting, they're recruiting better than they ever have 
Right now, they are in the process of recruiting at the highest level that you've seen that program recruit at. The organizational structure right now is night and day better than at any point during Kevin Sumlin's tenure. The culture, I think, is night and day better than at any point during Kevin Sumlin's tenure. They don't have a star quarterback. God bless Kellen Mond. Kellen Mond was not a guy that was going to compete with the best in the country. When they get it, maybe they got him on campus. Maybe they go transfer portal. Maybe it's a home run they end up hitting in recruiting. When they get that box checked, Kevin Sumlin is going to be a distant memory, if he isn't already, at A&M. Jimbo Fisher's there. They are there. They're right there. They are knocking on the door of Tier 1 right now, and you don't realize it because you view them as inferior because they keep getting run by Alabama. The reason they're getting run by Alabama isn't because they have an inferior roster. It's because they have been inferior at quarterback. If I just change that. Sounds simple. It's a lot harder than that. I'll grant you that. But the roster's not going anywhere. The organizational structure, the culture, it's not going anywhere. They're in the right place already. Right place, right time. People talk about it all the time. They're in the right place right now. The rest of the program's there. It's built. It's ready to go. It is a high-performance sports car. I just need someone to drive it. I just need the quarterback. If they get it, here they come. That's Texas A&M's mood right now.